Hey everyone, uh, this is Trevor here. So today we'll be talking about segment trees. But before starting segment trees, I want to ask a small favor from you guys. So there is a student from Punjab University whose name is Tarun Gupta. And he is currently raising his funds for his medical expenses. So he's suffering from acute liver failure. And he'll be requiring around 45 lakhs for his treatment, which is a huge amount for any middle class family. So his college mates are organizing a contest where the entry fees is only 100 rupees and whatever the collection comes up from that participation that goes entirely into his funds for treatment and the prize money of the contest is uh, 5000 for the first 3000 for the second 2000 for the third so i request you if you end up winning the contest please donate the amount to tarun he literally needs it and also this video is monetized so whatever funding comes from this video will also go to Tarun's account. And yes, guys, do participate because 100 is not a big amount. You spend it daily here and there. I think if it can help someone in a small way, I think you should do it. So this is a small request from Striver or take you forward that if you have ever felt that I have helped you in any way, please participate in this contest. And if you win, donate your amount. So the link to the contest will be in the description and the link to the Google form will also be in the description. Please check that out and if possible, do participate. So let's move on to today's video. So let's first understand the use case of segmentary. Assume that you're given N integers. Now let's say you're given three queries and for every query, you're given two integers that is L and R. And your task is to print the maximum in the range L and R. So from one to two, you have to print the maximum. So if you take the range one to two, consider it as zero indexing. The maximum is four for this, for two to five. The maximum is seven for four to eight. Again, the maximum is seven. So what is the brute force way of doing it? The brute force way is very easy. You range from L and R to find the maximum in that range. And you are given Q queries. So at a minimum, the value of L can be zero and at a maximum, the value of R can be N minus one. So we can say for every query, you might end up taking big O of N time. And if there are Q queries, you can say that your code works in big O of Q into N complexity. Now, what if N is around 10 to the power of five and Q is around 10 to the power of five. So it will be around big O of 10 to the power 10 operation, which the machine cannot handle. So to solve such kind of range problems, we use segment tree. So let's understand uh, what is actually a segment tree. So segment tree is nothing but a data structure which stores the resultant of a given range in a given index in an array. Now let's understand that. So the segment tree in its root stores the summation between 0th index and the 9th index. Now if you consider zero based indexing of the segment tree, this root node is marked as zero. So this root node has two children and since the root node has the indexing of zero, its children will always have the indexing as two into index of parent plus one. This is the left child and the right child will always have the indexing as two into index plus two. So if this is zero, this will become two into zero plus one. So that is one and this becomes two into zero. That is zero plus two, two. Now the left child stores the resultant between the range zero and four and the right child stores the resultant between five and nine. So how do we get this? It's very easy. Whatever is this and this, you simply add it and divide it by two. So the value that you get is four. So from zero to four, you take the left children and from five to nine, you take the right children. Similarly, zero and four gets divided into two children. So what will be its index number? It will be again 2 into 1 plus 1, that is 3. And the right index will be 2 into 1 plus 2, that is 4. Similarly, the right children gets divided into two children. Now, what will be the index of that children? It will be 2 into 2 plus 1, that is 5. 2 into 2 plus 2, that is 6. What will be the range that this children will be storing? It will be from 0 to 2. Why? Because 0 plus 4 by 2 is 2. So from 0 to 2. And this one stores the range between 3 to 4. Similarly, what will be this storing? 5 plus 9 by 2. So that is nothing but 7. So we can say from 5 to 7. And the right one stores from 8 to 9. Now this node gets divided into 2. So what will be its index number? It will be 2 into 3 plus 1. That is 7. And the right one becomes 8. 
So what range will it be storing? The left one stores from 0 to 1 and the right one stores from 2 to 2. Uh, similarly, this node also divides itself into two children. So the left one, so the left one is indexed as 9 and the right one is indexed as 10 and it stores the range between 3 to 3 and this stores the range between 4 to 4. Similarly, the fifth node also gets divided into two children. Now the first one will be from 5 to 6 range and the right one will be from 7 to 7. What will be its index number? It's very easy. It will be 11 and 12. Similarly, this one gets divided into two. So this stores the range between 8 to 8 and this one stores the range between 9 to 9. And the index of this will be 13 and the index of the right one will be 14. And the seventh node gets divided into two. So this stores from 0 to 0 and this stores from 1 to 1. And what will be its indexing? It will be nothing but 15 and 16. Similarly, this 5 to 6 gets divided into 2. The left one stores from 5 to 5 and the right one stores from 6 to 6. And the numbering will be nothing but 11 into 2 plus 1, that is 23, and 11 into 2 plus 2, that is 24. So this is how the tree is represented actually. Now the next step, we need to understand how do we fill this tree up? So how do we fill this segment tree? Now at 0 to 0, when the left and the right are equal, that means they only have one element range. So 0 to 0 means this one. So we can say that that is 8. Now 1 to 1 has 2. So can we say that from 0 to 1, the maximum will be the maximum of 8 and 2? Yes, we can say that. So we fill that up. Now from 2 to 2, what is the value? That is 5. So can we say that from 0 to 2, if we find the maximum from 0 to 1 and find the maximum from 2 to 2, we'll get the answer. So we can easily say that the maximum is the maximum of 8 and 5. That is 8. So if we want to fill 3 to 3, what will be the maximum? That will be 1 because the array element itself. Now what will be from 4 to 4? Four? 4 itself. So what will be the maximum from 3 to 4? It will be the maximum between these two nodes. That is 4. So what will be the maximum from 0 to 4? It will be the maximum from 0 to 2 and then from 3 to 4. Now this is the reason we divided them into two halves such that you get the maximum of the left half and get the maximum of the right half. And eventually the maximum of the entire half will be the maximum of the left and the maximum of the right half. So we can easily write 8 over here. Now let's calculate the right half. So what is the maximum from 5 to 5? That is 5. What is the maximum from 6 to 6? That is 3. So what is the maximum from 5 to 6? We can say this as 5. Now what is the maximum from 7 to 7? That is 9. So what is the maximum from 5 to 7? That is 9. Similarly, we can fill the other halves too. From 8 to 8, it will be 6. From 9 to 9, it will be 10. And the maximum of 6 and 10 will be 10. And the maximum of 9 and 10 will be 10. And we can say the maximum of 8 and 10 is 10. If you carefully look around, the node actually stores the maximum of the entire range. If you want the maximum of the entire range, that is 10. If you want the maximum between 5 and 7, what will be it? It will be 9. So that is what it stores. So the segment tree is a kind of tree structure, but you can store it in an array. Why? Because you've already indexed it as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can easily store it in an array where 0th index will represent the range between 0 and 9, where the 1th index will represent the range between 0 and 4, where the 8th index will represent the range between 2 and 2, where the 23rd index will represent the range between 5 and 5. So you can see that the value of n was 10 and we went around 24. So the maximum value that this node indexing can go is up till 4 into n. If you want the proof for this, you can refer to this article. The link is in the description. So I've constructed the segment tree. Now, how can we query for a range? Now, let's say I want the maximum between the range 3 and 8. So how can we get this? Uh, because none of the node directly stores the maximum between 3 and 8. So how will we get this? To get this, we have to traverse in the segment tree. So what you do is you start with the root node. Now there are three conditions. If this range completely lies inside it, or the second condition is it doesn't lies inside it. 
And the third condition is if it overlaps. Let's see how can we query for the range three to nine. So zero to nine, we can say overlaps this three and eight. So whenever it overlaps, we will go in both the direction that is to the left and that is to the right. So now we are at zero and four. So zero and four, we can say again overlaps because it doesn't completely lies inside it or it doesn't lies outside it. So we move to this node number one. So zero and four again overlaps for three and eight. So we move to the left and we move to the right. So we are at the node three. So the node three represents the range from zero to two. So zero and two will never contribute to our answer. So we can say that this node doesn't lies. So what we will do is we'll come back from this half. Now remember one thing we were trying to find the maximum. So since this node cannot contribute to the answer. So let's return a value int of minimum, assuming that all the numbers are in the range of integers. Now let's check if three and four entirely lies. Yes, three and four entirely lies inside three and eight. So we can say that whatever is the maximum between three and four, it will always contribute to it. Why? Because we are finding for the range three and eight. So instead of traveling any further down, what we can do is we can simply return the value four from here. So the left side returns int min and the right side returns four. So we can say that the maximum of them is four. So this guy will return four. Now let's check out for the right half. Now five by nine overlaps for three and eight. So what we will do is we'll move to the left and move to the right. So five and seven completely lies inside three and eight. So we do not move further because whatever is the maximum of five and seven, we can say that that value will always contribute to my answer because my range is three to eight. So this guy returns nine. Now let's move on the right half. So the right half ranges from eight to nine. Now eight to nine overlaps because it neither completely lies or it neither completely doesn't lies. So this overlaps. So we again move to the left and to the right. So if you move to the left, it's eight comma eight, which completely lies inside three comma eight. So six will contribute to our answer. So we get six and from right nine comma nine doesn't lies. So this will never contribute to our answer. So we can return a value int mean. Now what is the maximum of six and int mean because we moved in both direction. We can say the value is six. So this guy has a value six. So he returns it. So what is the value of six and nine? We can say the value is nine. So this guy returns nine. So from the left we have four and from the right we have nine. So we can say that the maximum of the range three to eight is nothing but nine. Now that is very obvious because if you check from three to eight, you will see that the maximum is nine. So this is how we can actually query in the segment tree to find out the maximum in a given range. So how can we code this? Now it's very easy. Initially you start with the node index zero and you start with zero and nine. So, you know, the left call will be zero to mid and the right call will be mid plus one to high and the node numbers will be two into the node plus one and two into node plus two. Now, whenever you reach the end, you have to backtrack and while backtracking, you take the maximum of the left and right. So this is how you create the segment tree. Now, how do you query? You basically check for these three conditions. If it doesn't lies, you return an int mean. If it overlaps, you move to the left and you move to the right and ultimately while returning, you return the maximum of both of them. And if it completely lies, you do not move and you simply return whatever is stored at the node. Now, since from the uh, proof, you know that there can be a maximum of two into n minus one nodes. So we can say that the time taken to build this segment tree will be big O of this, which is equivalent to big O of n. And the time taken to query will be big O of log n. Why? Because if you observe carefully, when you take the larger ranges, you don't have to move extremely towards the leaf. You stop either at the second or the third level. And when you take small ranges, in that case also, you don't have to always split them into two halves. You simply keep on moving on one direction. If you want to know the proof of log n, I've given the link in the description. You can go through that. So what we need initially is the array. Now what I will do is I will initialize everything globally so that I don't have to carry them in the functions. Let's assume the maximum size is 10 to the power of five. The next step is take the array as the input. 
So the next step is take the array as the input. I have to build the segment tree. So we start building from the root. So let's create a function build. Now we know we start building it from the root. So let's call the first variable as the index of the root that is zero and the range. Let's take it as low and high. So initially we know the range will be from zero to n minus one. Now let's write the function. So build function will build my segment tree. So initially it takes index as zero because that is the first node which stores the range from zero to n minus one. So at first let's build the segment tree. So we know that initially we were computing mid. So if you check out from zero to nine, we went to zero to four and we went to five to nine. So if you carefully observe it's something which you did in must shot two. So we can call the build function for the left children. So for that, the value will be two into index plus one and it will be low comma mid. And for the right, we can call it as build of two into index plus two and from mid plus one to high. Now this is the building step. Now what is the last step where you stop? So if you carefully observe, you always stop at zero, zero, one, one. So we can say at any time low is equal to equal to high. We simply stop. So we can say the base case will always be low equal to equal to high. At that moment, we have to stop. Now, whenever we are stopping, we know that the segment tree will store the value of the array. So the segment trees index is segment tree of end and the value of the array is a of low. So you have stored it. So once you have done it, you can simply return and break out of the function. Now, once this base case is performed, so this recursion call will be over and it has to backtrack. Now, when we were backtracking, what did we do? Now, this is index. This is two into index plus one. This is two into index plus two. Now, whenever we were backtracking, we were storing the value of the maximum of the left and the maximum of the right at the index. So we do the similar thing. So we write seg of index will be the maximum of seg of left one that is two into index plus one and the right one that is two into index plus two. So once you write this piece of code, your segment tree is ready now. Now what you need to do is you need to query. So let's take the queries. So you know that you have L and R and you have to query in the segment tree. So let's write the query function. Now the query function always returns an integer that is the maximum value. So we take integer query. Now we know that we need the index, we need the low, we need the high and Along with this, we will be requiring INTL and R to compare if it completely lies, if it doesn't lies, or if it overlaps. So at first, let's write the condition of completely lies. So we can say that if your low is greater than or equal to L and, and your high is lesser than or equal to R. So we can say that the node completely lies inside the range which I'm searching for. So in that case, I can simply return segment of index instead of going further down. Now, when can I say that the node low comma high doesn't lies? So if the value of high is lesser than L, so what does that mean? The node lies towards the left of the range L and R. So it doesn't lies or if the value low is greater than R. So I can easily say that it doesn't lies. Now, whenever it doesn't lies, what were we returning? We were returning a value int mean because we are finding the maximum. Now, if we are to find the minimum value would have returned int max. So this is done. Now, what is the next condition? If these two conditions are not satisfied, we can say that it overlaps. Now, whenever it was overlapping, we were moving towards the left and towards the right. So let's call the left function. Now, whenever we move to the left, how does the index change? It is two into index plus one and you move to the left. So it will be low comma mid and you simply pass L and R. So let's calculate the value of mid. Let's move to the right two. So what will be the value of the right children? That will be two into index plus two and mid plus one comma high is the node range and L and R. So once they return after completing their recursion calls, we can say we'll return the maximum of left and right. And in doing so, we get our maximum. So we can simply print out query of the first node we started that is zero and the range that the first node covers is zero comma n minus one and the range l and r and l and r is the range in which we have to find the maximum now what if the problem was to find the sum between the ranges so in that case instead of storing maximum you would have added eight and two 
So 8 plus 2 would have been 10 and 10 plus 5 would have been 15 and so on. Basically you add up. So this is how you implement your segment tree. So I hope you have understood the entire logic and the code. So if you have done it, do not forget to press that like button. And if you're new to my channel, subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos. They might help you too. And in the next video, we will be solving a follow-up problem on segment tree.